it's another episode of Refill Nation. I've got cat food and sugar and marshmallows and pork and all sorts of stuff. Let's check it out. I'm going to be doing two big pours here. So I have some um, paper on the ground so just stuff doesn't fly around. The first one is going to be for cat food. I'm leaving town for about a week and a half and I'm leaving somebody in charge of feeding the cats and I want to make sure they have enough. The last time they almost didn't have enough and this time they won't have enough if I don't put it in a big container because they're eating so much in preparation for winter. I could use a scoop but I think I'm just going to try to pour it and I'm going to hold it between my feet there so it doesn't move. Let's hope for the best. That should be sufficient. My second big pour is going to be sugar. I was gonna get just four pounds of sugar, but it was almost $4 at Walmart, the house brand. So I went ahead and got the 10 pound one. I will use it all up. Um, and that was like 750, so it was a way better deal. So I need to put it in a bigger container. I do have sugar in mason jars, but this will hold until, um, until I'm ready to use it. So let me go grab the bag. Well, here goes. I have the funnel to help avoid spillage. So I'm going to try to hold these with my feet and pour this. So let's see how it goes. Oops. A little bit of spillage. Good thing I have the, um, the uh, paper under it. Well, this is going good. I think it's all going to fit. This is a big uh, canister I got from Walmart several years ago. I got some square ones and some big rectangular ones, sort of big double squares, I guess. I like those better than these, but these are good for um, like bulk items of uh, like sugar I'm doing now or the cat food that I just did. Okay, let's just do this by hand here without the funnel. Whoops, looks like it's almost. I don't want to overfill. Well, I have a mason jar that needs a uh, topping off so that'll be good. This one we got to here and it'll go in my pantry. Well my first order of business for the leftover sugar is I'm going to fill my sugar container for my morning tea. This might fill it. If not I have a, um, a mason jar right behind it that I can put the rest in. There that's about it. I like this because it has this lid. Keeps ants out etc. I have a critter issue here. I haven't had any mice since the big mice, mouse um, drama this last winter, but, you know, it's going to get cold again, and it's anybody's guess as to what's going to happen. So I'm really trying to um, put everything in. Whoops. So I'm really trying to keep everything in, um, in a secure position as I can. So the rest will go in here, and this will go in my pantry shelf. There we go. Now I've got this bag of um, marshmallows. I think I got it at Dollar Tree. But I also want to protect it. So I'm just going to keep it in its bag. And I think it's going to fit in here. I think the key is the really wide opening at the top. Keep your fingers crossed. I sure love to have it in glass. If I can't fit it in glass, I do have some plastic containers I can put it in. But I do love to be able to. Oh, it looks like it's going to fit. Just the air. The air is keeping it. Uh, let me try a little bit more. Well, it's got a little bit on the top there, but I think I can close it like this. I probably should have shoved more of this down to the bottom before um, I tried to shove it all in, but that's what it is, and I didn't have to break the plastic bag at all. I was excited to get a really good deal on this uh, Great Values Walmart's house brand of uh, hot cocoa. I think it was $4 and something, and it's... Uh, Made with real cocoa, you just need to add water. And let me see how many cups it makes. At three tablespoons per serving, it makes 22 servings. And finally, brown sugar. I had purchased this a few months ago. I'm glad I did because I'm sure it's gone up in price and uh, I'm gonna put it in this glass container. 
this is two pounds of uh, brown sugar. This is a half gallon um, container, so I think it should fit just fine. I'm gonna use the funnel. There it goes. Brown sugar doesn't um, pour quite as easily as white sugar does, but that's okay. There we go. Now I know it's gonna be safe from whoever decides to invade my house this year. <laughs> sort of come to terms with the fact that the forest likes to come inside too. Look at that, it's a perfect fit. And we're good to go on the brown sugar. Well, I'm back. Finally got this overhead camera on Amazon. My other one broke and I'm so happy I can do things. I had um, everything on a tripod before and it was challenging. So I'm gonna be eating a lot of rice this winter because I have a lot of rice. So um, I've been making some rice dishes. They've been delicious, and uh, this needs to be refilled. I have um, I put my bulk rice in this um, canister a couple months ago. I think I did a refill on it actually. So get it out. It's in um, it's in the canister in a in like a ziploc. There you go. So I'm going to pour some of that into here because it's easier to access than the big one, and then put this big one back in the pantry. I sure love this funnel. That. I have a uh, couple of bay leaves in here to keep out the weird little things that can grow. I put it in both my flour and my rice. And I also put my rice and my flour in the freezer for a couple days when I first buy them. So here goes. that my hand kind of got in the way there, but it's coming out. I have to be kind of careful with this because uh, it, has a, it could overflow very easily. I think next time I'm going to get a scoop for it instead of trying to pour it. Here we are. That's good enough for now. I'll put that back in the pantry. Put the bay leaves back in here. I might get a couple more bay leaves and uh, let out the air and put it back in the canister. I'm gonna refill my uh, sugar jar for my tea. I'm gonna pour it out of this container, then I'm gonna put more sugar in this container. It seems like it would be more efficient to pour it directly from the big container into here, but the big container is too, so big, I'm afraid it's gonna spill. So I'm gonna go from large to larger, or from small to large, whatever. Okay, so that's filled up. Good enough, and I'm going to get the uh, larger container and fill this up. See the size of this thing? It's one of those uh, Walmart big uh, pouring uh, canisters, I guess, or containers. So I got a, a bunch. I was just going to get four pounds of um, of uh, sugar, but it was much cheaper to get ten pounds, so I got ten pounds, and I really don't regret it. I'm going to be doing quite a bit of baking, so I'm going to fill this one up. Then I'll have it on the shelf for baking. It's a lot easier than trying to use this directly, this big one. All right, I'm gonna fill up uh, some honey right now. I have this jar, it's just a little bit at the bottom. I know a lot of people use honey for sweeteners. I don't use it that much, sometimes in tea. This was actually, you know how it gets really, really hard and, and crystallized? So it was that way I couldn't have gotten a spoon or anything in it, but I put it in the window, in the windowsill where it's sunny and it totally liquefied. So I'm just going to put it into here, which is a lot smaller. And then because it's a lot smaller, I can um, keep it up here on my tea shelf. So let's see how this goes. What I do is I usually start the, uh, the pouring process, which is slow. And I'm going to go lean this against um, the kitchen wall here on the countertop. And it'll probably take about 15, 20 minutes to completely empty out. So I got this cheese at uh, Costco a few days ago, and it had uh, four types of variety pack, uh, Swiss, Colby Jack, Cheddar, and Monterey Jack. 
So they're not wrapped, they're just stacked like this. So I started putting them in um, wax paper here, wax, wrapped in wax paper and put in a freezer bag, just like this. And I'll take them out as I need them. In my experience, uh, sliced cheese does not do real well when it's defrosted. It tends to stick together. And I guess I could have put wax paper between each um, each little slice of cheese, but it's really quite all right. So what I'm going to do is, there's as you can see, there's two different colors. This is the I guess the mixed, and this is the white cheese. I don't know if you can see that. There's a lot of sun right now. But each stack I'm going to divide into two and uh, wrap it up and then divide the other one into two. Oops. I don't know why they don't make those uh, blades on the edge better. So I'm just going to wrap that up. Just like that. And put it in the... Um, in this bag and then I'm going to put the whole thing in the freezer. I made an interesting observation about um, sliced cheese a few weeks ago. I've been getting small packs of sliced cheese from Grocery Outlet. I don't know how many um, slices, maybe 10 slices, I don't know, um, just like this for $2.99 and it was great. And then I went one day to uh, Walmart and they had packages of sliced cheese for $1.99. So I thought, well, that's even greater. But then I took the Walmart sliced cheese home and opened it and they were actually smaller <laughs> than the uh, ones I'm used to from grocery outlets. So it took two slices to do what one slice uh, would do from grocery outlet. The best deal so far I found is on this Costco cheese. It was, I think, $8.99 for 40 slices and um, the slices are nice sized and also thick. So I'll probably be getting my um, sliced cheeses from there from now on if I can, if at all possible. I'm gonna put that in the refrigerator. Okay, that's all filled and ready for the freezer. And I have a little, I held back for immediate use. As you can see, the honey is still flowing and I'm gonna leave it here a little longer till it's uh, as drained out as possible from the big uh, the big jar. This is my last refill. One of my clients had received um, a frozen bag of pulled pork. And uh, when I took it out of the freezer, I saw that it was already cooked. So I told him I'd take it home and make it for him. I um, defrosted it and poured it into the crock pot with the juices that were in there and the fat. And just let it cook for about an hour or two and then uh, since it was still kind of liquidy, I took the, the lid and kind of laid it across the top so there's enough room for some evaporation. After there had been some evaporation, I had some barbecue sauce and added it, stirred it in, let it cook a little bit longer. And uh, now it's done and I'm going to put it in a bowl and put a plastic cover on this, put it in the fridge and then bring it to him tomorrow. I love doing this sort of stuff for my clients. I would have done it at his house. I just wasn't sure how long it was going to take. And I had all the equipment here. So I'll get it done. He'll be happy. So there we go. It smells good. I think it came out fine. And like I say, he'll be really happy. The big challenge today is that um, I have no water. It's a tank crisis. So I'm not going to be able to wash this until tomorrow. But uh, that's just the way it is. I have to go to work tomorrow and I wanted to get this to him, so it will be fine. I think we got it as much out as I can. It's a lot of sun you can't see. So here it is. It filled the bowl. Like I said, I'll be putting some plastic on top, putting it in the refrigerator, and taking it to him tomorrow. So those are my refills for now. Thank you so much for keeping me company.